Tammy here. I'm out here today to show you goldenrod in the wild and to pick what I need to create a tincture. A lot of people believe that goldenrod um, hinders them during allergy season and it's actually not true. Goldenrod is will help you fight against allergies. Goldenrod is the last thing that the bees come after. It holds its pollen right to it. It will not cause, it won't let loose. As a matter of fact, here's some older goldenrod. Season's getting kind of late, and as you can see, it still has a beautiful golden. It holds it right down to the end. Now to make a tincture, I want full blooms. I want them to be nice and golden and puffy. And I'm gonna pick several pieces. You can either pick them individually like this, or you can snap the whole head off and take it inside and clean it. Just like that. Now you don't dry goldenrod. You don't have to dry goldenrod. It's actually better if you take the blooms fresh and go ahead and uh, make a tincture when you bring it inside. You're going to shake them. Make sure there's no little creatures that are living within them. And I don't even rinse them. They don't need to be. You can make a tincture in several ways. I use 100% uh, uh, vodka. I also do a glycerite, a glycerin one. And I also do a half and half where I'll put glycerin in on them, let them settle, let it settle, and then pour alcohol to top it off. Some people have a hard time using alcohol as their tincture base. So adding glycerin to it or making an all glycerite, it's not really a tincture, it's called a glycerite. Doing an all glycerite makes it easier on them when they actually take it. Here's some that has started to uh, go to seed and puff out a little bit. Now I will tell you that I take whole bundles like this in full bloom, tie them up and hang them, and they never do that. I've, I've sold huge amounts of them to people that they use them either for crafts or they'll save them and make medicines themselves later. All right, I'm gonna continue picking. I got quite a bit here to go through. It's getting past time though, so here in Maine, we're heading into fall. There isn't a lot of time left, but I still have plenty of bloom. And once I get them all picked and I get inside, I'll show you how to handle them from there. Okay, all I'm doing now is just taking the blooms off themselves. And I wanna get all I can. I will tell you that before I harvest or go after any herbal ally, I always ask permission. I know it's gonna sound funny to some of you that don't understand. But if the plant doesn't give itself to you, I don't believe that the medicine's going to work for you. So if you have a hard time taking it off or you have a hard time finding it, well then it's not your medicine. Those are just my beliefs. It's how I was taught and it's how I stand. And I say a little prayer and say thank you to the plant for showing itself to me and allowing me to harvest it so that I can make medicines for my family, friends, those that need it. You know, people mistake all the time that, uh, you know, anybody can do this, but are you really supposed to? I believe it's a calling. You either are attracted to plants and know them on a spiritual level and medicinal level, which is, to me is the same, or you don't. And if you don't, then it isn't your job in life. All right, I'm going to continue getting these all ready. And then my son's going to help me and we're going to show you how to put a tincture together. All right, this is what we ended up with, a nice little pile. Go 
going to end up putting, I do it the old folk way. Uh, there are different ways to measure. You can get pretty scientific with it, but for me, the folk method has always worked. And all I'm going to do is put it in my jar. If you find some like that, just take the parts that have started to go by off. If that's all you have, though, it's okay to use it. But if I can use just good, clean, healthy goldenrod, then that's what I'm going to use. And as you can see, some of the stem and the leaves are still on it. I don't pack it tight, but I do make sure my jar has plenty in it. About three quarters full. As you can see, it's in there. There's a little down below. You can give it a little tossle there, shake it, and it'll drop it down. If you need to add a little more to it, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to add just a little more. And there's another one. That one I'm not even going to, well, yeah, I can. I can save a little out of that. I happen to see that, so I pulled it out. But if you don't happen to see it, it's really not going to hurt your tincture any. So don't get don't get too 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 over you know dramatic about it all. And then I use hundred proof vodka. That's the reason I use the hundred proof is because it already has all the balance of water and alcohol in it. I don't have to do any measuring to figure that out. And then all I'm going to do is just a simple pour it over the top of it. I'm going to fill my jar right up to the top. And the reason that is, is I don't want any air in there. I want to make sure that my plant ally goldenrod in this case is completely covered and that there isn't any air trapped in there to cause any kind of, um, bacteria that grows because it can do that and I put my lid on nice and tight I'll give it a little turnover and as you can see isn't that beautiful now that's going to get labeled I didn't bring any labels out with me but that's going to get labeled and I'll put the today's date on it I'll put the date that it's ready and it'll be ready anywhere from six to eight weeks and I'll also put exactly what it is and where I harvested it at, only because even though um, some some plant allies, depending on where you've harvested them at, has stronger properties in them than others. So if I get a lot of people that say to me or my family that says, boy, that tincture worked better than the last one or the one before that, then I can go back and I'll know exactly where I harvested that at and I'll know that that has more of the goodness in it that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to show you one more thing because goldenrod is used, if you put it in a tincture, it's wonderful for to reducing pain and swelling in the joints. People don't realize that. They look at it as an allergy uh, to cause allergies, but it really isn't. It helps with inflammation it's used as a diuretic, which helps you um, make your urine flow. And in making your urine flow, it helps keep kidney stones out. If you have somebody in your family that's prone to kidney stones, men typically are as they get past their 40s. My husband is. So this is an absolute must for him. If, if he has this, it keeps everything going good, and we, he doesn't have to go through all that pain and suffering. It's also great as a sob. And as a sob, it helps with muscle spasms, gout, joint pain. Um, it's used for skin problems if you have eczema or any kind of skin issues. It, if you turn it into a sob, it'll help topically. Sorry about that. I missed these when I was actually going through it. That's why it's always best to double check, triple check. As you're loading your jar, just don't cram it in there. Go right through it. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but because I'm using it in a sauve, I also use other bases that go with it, so I don't need as much of it. I just need enough to uh, get the medicine out so that I can add that in. And I'm doing the same technique. I'm just filling my jar three quarters full 
But in this case, I used to use um, olive oil or sunflower oil, and you still can use those things. But I prefer vegetable glycerin now. And the reason I do is it holds the medicine, pulls it out better, holds the medicine's benefits longer. And vegetable glycerin is actually really great for your skin. So it helps too. It works with whatever you're making to help heal whatever issues you have going on with your skin. And then I'm just going to pour it over the top, just like I did the alcohol. Now this takes a minute though, because this is a heavier than the alcohol, so it'll take a minute for it to get down in there. So always let it settle a little bit. And this is an old peanut butter jar. When you, you reuse jars, things like this are wonderful. It has a nice seal in on the inside of it, so it's gonna tighten up and keep the air out of it, just like a canning jar lid would. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. As it goes down, I'm gonna make sure that I fill it right up to the rim and cover it up. Some people will use a tool and put it down in there, but I don't want to take a chance of putting any germs into it itself. I don't care how clean you get them. So I just leave the plant matter, and it'll work its way out. And later on, I can also check it, and if it needs to be topped off a little more, I can do that too. And this will set six to eight weeks just the same. The best thing for you to do when you're working with plant allies, if you're a beginner, is make sure that you do your own research. And there are a lot of people out there that have many different types of techniques. Mine's not the only way, it's just my way. I'm sharing with you how I do things, but it doesn't mean that it's the rule or the way that it has to be done. That's really up to you. Research, research, research. All right guys, that's really all it is. And I'm gonna label this too. I will tell you, I'll write down exactly what it is how I've made it, what it is that the soluble that I have in it to draw out the, the plants. That little bugger just doesn't want to go down in there. I can put a little more in there already. I can see that. Get out of here. Go away. The bees are after it. This is their food. This is the last food source that they get usually here in Maine, so they're all about it. Whoops. Wind's blowing, so it kind of sent a little off to the side. Then I'm just going to tighten it on there good and tight. Tip it over. Try to make sure I've got all of that glycerin down in there. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely beautiful. Like I said, I'll wait for a few hours and then I'll open that jar back up, double check it to make sure she's good and full and all the plant matter is down. And then if it isn't, I'll top it off a little bit more. And if it is, then I'm all good. Now the rest of this, I will set out on paper towels and let it dry. And I can use it in a tea. I can use it when it's dry if I need more, but this is really all I need. This is all my family needs. This will carry us from season to season. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing and watching. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscription button and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to share. Sharing it gets my videos out there and helps my channel grow. Thanks. See you in the next video.